Hey, welcome to another episode of Strive 365, a podcast about how we can push through the challenges and thrive every day, no matter the odds. We're here to help and guide you to live a better life, whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And I'm your host, Justin Arnold, in the amazing Rock Vox studio. Now, today we have a very special guest, uh, my good friend, Anthony Valero. He's the owner of Four Rims Chimney. You might have seen his face on billboards and commercials around here in Rochester. Uh, but Anthony's journey to where he is today has been filled with obstacles. Uh, he struggled with addiction to he had a debilitating roof accident which we'll get into that left him wheelchair bound but the cool thing about this guy is he refused to let those challenges define him and instead has used them as motivation to build a successful business that helps a lot of people in the rochester area area and in this episode, we'll hear uh, about Anthony's journey to recovery, how he found his passion for being a business owner and providing amazing opportunities, and how he's managed to stay resilient in the face of adversity. So sit back, relax, and let's enjoy this episode with Anthony Venario, the man behind Four Winds <laughs> Chimney. <laughs> you like right. that? I All do. right. So, Anthony, uh, introduce yourself to the listeners, to the viewers here. Yeah. So, Anthony Valerio, uh, I own Four Winds Chimney. Um, so, we operate out of Rochester, New York. Uh, we have about 10, 10 11 crews here uh, working on a second location out of Geneva. I also co own a basement waterproofing company as well called Storm Basement Waterproofing. Um, from Geneva originally, I've lived up here for the better part of 10, 12 years now. Um, married. My wife, Laura. Uh, is home with uh, two kids. We got Evelyn. She's about to be four on May 28th. My son, Michael, who just turned two. Uh, so I got a beautiful family. Um, yeah, so that's it. He does. And <laughs> yeah, and we'll definitely get into that because as uh, many of you know, as I know too, just being a business owner, managing family, that word balance that gets thrown around and what that looks like. But uh, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about your businesses. You, you like, a lot of people know you for four wins. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that and what <clears throat> you guys do. Yeah. So we, we just hit our five year anniversary. So fifth year in business, that was February 14th, 2018. I, we joked that that was my Valentine's Day gift to my <laughs> wife, even though it didn't really feel like a gift the first few years. Um, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so started uh, February 14, 2018. Uh, we have 29 employees there now total. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, we just, uh, so, yeah, we service all of Greater Rochester, Finger Lakes, everything from uh, chimney inspections, chimney sweeping, uh, repair, rebuilding, relining, uh, gas inserts, wood stoves, everything chimney and fireplace that you can think of, we cover. Um, and yeah, I mean, we grew, we grew pretty aggressively. I mean, I, I knew going in, uh, I always say it was like the, I was stacking chips on my shoulder because I had people in the beginning telling me, uh, you'll see why you won't make money being fully insured. And you'll see why, you'll see why you have to do jobs off the books. And I, made it my mission that first year and a half, I put post-it notes everywhere to prove the you'll see's wrong because I wanted to do it right. I wanted something yeah. to be proud of. And and uh, so I got busy that way, you know, built up my team, solid team. I have a solid, solid team and the rest has been history. Yeah, and I can concur with that latter part, like from writing my books to uh, my gym, uh, sim similar things that come in. I love how you, uh, Navigated in around and ignored the noise and yeah. sorts with that. Ignore so the noise. Yeah. You said you didn't feel like uh, they were gifts the first few years. So it sounds like a little challenge, but you made it through. You, you're happily still married yeah. <laughs> and you got yeah. kids. So tell us a little bit about that. And maybe you could offer some tips to the listeners, viewers. Yeah, it's. I think it's common. And uh, I think it's c common, you know, because... So I was all about, and I talk about that now with my team and others, like, find your why, you know, find your why, why are you doing this, find your why. And, you know, for me, it was, I mean, to to kind of get really in, into it, I was working uh, for a different company up here. It was under the table, um, under the table here and there, didn't have the right insurance, fell off the roof, broke my leg. That's when you and I started working together yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's when I met him, yeah. Yeah, doing workouts in your gym with uh, pretty much one leg. And, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, and the bigger thing was my wife uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I fell off that roof five days before her surgery, man. double mastectomy, which, you know, she's definitely beat When now. it rains, it pours, man. Yeah. You know, but I went from, like, I was supposed to be the caretaker for my wife to, like, 
couch bound for months, no money coming in, nothing. And that was one of the one of the lower points in my life. And I just said, I'll never go through this again, never put someone through it. Shortly after I started Four Winds. Um, and, you know, my, my why was, you know, so it was that. It was to provide for my family, build something to be proud of. And I think the common thing that happens, with, it's hard wearing all the hats, you know, as a business owner. Uh, you know, you think you're grinding something, you're building something, you make these sacrifices, but it's for the greater good. That's for this long goal, which is definitely necessary, I think, to some extent. You know, but I, uh, my story with it is that, uh, you know, I just dove so much into work. And then it was working 12, 13 hours a day. I'd come home and I would continue working then. So it wasn't even like, you know, physically I wasn't present at times and I was at work, then I'd come home and mentally I wasn't present. And that was the start of my marriage. You know, we had just gotten married, started my marriage when my daughter was born, even kind of somewhat into when my son was born, but, but not so much. And, um, you know, it's just, it, uh, it has paid off. That's for sure. But it, it's, there's Literally. definitely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. um, would I do it again is a question. Would I do it that way again is a question I get asked a lot and I would tweak some things, you know, I would learn to delegate better early on was kind of it. So but then that's the question. Would you have learned to yeah. delegate better if you didn't Very true. go through? I mean, that's the whole, and uh, uh, like, that's the whole, uh, premise around purpose through pain in my book and just the idea of, you know, while these things might suck, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you have the strength and the ability and which everyone does, they just don't know it maybe, and the ability to be able to learn and grow from those experiences to make sure, like you said, you know, I'm not going to put them through this. You had a why. Yeah. Like we can care about ourselves for sure, but it's so much I don't want to say this. You and I are definitely similar in the idea that like, yeah, we love ourselves. We'll take care of our bodies. We'll work out, stay healthy. But when it comes to our kids and wife, man, nothing's going to stand in the way, right? We're yeah. going to do everything possible. That why is bigger than That's ourselves. Right. So having that, I think is so, I imagine, and I believe is so amazing. So yeah. since we kind of already got into it, let's, yeah. So backstory here, you, it, he gave you a great uh, cliffhanger there, a little <laughs> teaser. Yeah. So I met him through a mutual friend, acquaintance. And uh, yeah, this is my first, you know, I saw a lot of potential in this guy, but yeah, he was, can I say it? You were down, man. Go you were it. like, yeah. he was broken. Was he rough. was like, I'll never walk again. <laughs> I, I don't know if he ever cried, but you could tell he was emotional. And I've just always had this belief because of everything I've been through, everybody I've worked with, you know, to see him go from wheelchairs to not walking to myself and the things I've been through to, if you never set limits, you have belief, you have guidance and you have someone that believes in your corner and you can instill that belief in somebody, sky's the limit. I mean, it, it started out with, yeah, very limited stuff, but we were getting creative, which was fun and challenging for me. We have been fun. I mean, some of the things we even had this guy doing were things in the wheelchair, like cleaning presses, battle ropes, things you probably wouldn't have typically yeah. prescribed, so sledgehammer. but he's a man <laughs> who wants to do man stuff, who is doing man work. So I want to feel like a man <laughs> in his wheelchair. Cause again, there you talk about not making money, not feeling really good. I'm sure a little bit of ego oh, here yeah. was kicked in the butt. So, uh, yeah, he comes to me really broken, both physically and very much even more mentally, mentally. I would say. Uh, yeah, and mentally. yeah, so there you go. Let, let's and and so let's talk about that experience, which you did a little bit. But I want to hear more about how that experience uh, changed your outlook on life and business. Yeah, well, it's twofold. Uh, so that that was definitely a turning point. If you want to backtrack it even further, you want to get into that. Yeah, let's go. Backtrack go it even ride. further. Um, you know, it's these. <laughs> moments in life that purpose through the pain, right? You could relate it to your book. Like, uh, it's hard to find the purpose in, in the beginning when you're going through it. Uh, but then oh, hindsight, you see that everything just worked out the way it's supposed to. And there, there's a reason for everything, you know, so I struggled with addiction for years and uh, I was in a car accident when I was 18, 19, bad car accident. Uh, you know, put on pain meds that just spiraled, spiraled, spiraled. And it's, probably about 12 years ago now, um, hit a point. I mean, I was homeless, jobless, uh, legal problems, you know, as a result of addiction. And, 
Yeah, I mean, so th- that was it. That that was one of those moments. It was so again, hindsight. Uh, I'm extremely grateful that I went through it because I've I know both sides, right? I have been there, and I am on the, this side now too. The businesses, my family, but it helps me not forget my roots. It's there's a dose of humility that comes with that. Um, yeah, that's key. Like you don't. You have to remember where you come from. Some have people, to. You, it's, you can use the word humble, whatever word you want to use for it. But just knowing that, and it's a fight to never get back there, but it's also being like I've experienced that, and oh, I can yeah. provide a lot of value to people because you also don't want others. If you've got a big heart, uh, you got some deep love, you don't want to put others through that experience. Agreed. You want to provide as best your ability as well as coupled with not going back there. Agreed. So, yeah. I mean, it teaches you things like empathy, uh, empathy, love for others, love for the struggle, loving people despite going through a struggle. I mean, that was all like the principles it gave me, which were really like the some of the core stuff. Goodwill above all else. That was another thing. That, goodwill above all else is our is our core slogan for the business. Goodwill above all else, above all else, everything that we do. Um, you know, you do things right for the right reason because it is the right thing to do. And you treat people right, and that affects your your employees, your customers, and your community. Uh, so that was definitely a, a big point in my life that helped shape things. Um, you know, it took years after that <clears throat> till I actually started you know, the chimney business. And, uh, uh, you know, and then the other big moment was when I broke my leg. So I fell off a roof. Uh you know, I was going up on a roof real quick. It was five minutes worth of work. It was supposed to be real quick, and I ignored some of those minor, minor little so things. In your mind, you said real quick, so you went real quick, maybe. And <laughs> yeah. Then you went really quickly to the ground. Real quick. Yeah. So left leg, I went to go step back on the ladder from the roof. Ladder kicked out. Left leg completely, my ankle completely separated. I remember yeah. sitting up on the ground. I turned my knee to the left, and my foot went to the right. And... uh you know, so that's got 29 pins, two feet of plates, multiple surgeries, and that was a rough, rough point. And, uh, but really, really such a gift in that for me, too, because I never had the drive, or you could say purpose, mm-hmm. never had any of that um, leading up to those moments to like dream bigger and do something bigger. So, really, both experiences. You know, like I feel like the addiction part helped shape my outlook on life, helped the way I viewed other people, how I wanted to be viewed, how I wanted to treat people. You know, fast forward uh, when I had that accident, was like, all right, Anthony, you know, now is the time to make a stand in your life, and that was, you know, that was six six years ago now, so I think it was about thirty. Yeah, I mean, so so it seems like you you backtracked to addiction. Yep. We talked about that. It seems like these things, you know, they definitely improved your life and outlook. Uh, what were some of the things that you could specifically, especially we talked about that accident, but how has your addiction or your previous addiction uh, really impacted? Looking back on that as well, your businesses or just even your personal life. How how addiction the previous uh, what I went through impacted business now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. I mean, you know, so our whole motto at the chimney business is, uh, excuse me, people over profit, right? He's not crying people. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, people over profit, people over profit, right? That's uh, so that's a things. big thing. So um, we actually just, I just did this class at the National Chimney Convention. They wanted me to do a class on culture. That's what my business is known for within our industry. Uh, culture and business. And I'm like, man, easy one for me, people over profit, you focus on the well being focus on your employee and everything else comes right. You have to somewhat be guided by numbers where you have to know that your business is. Yeah, negative. you got to track it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I focus on my people, focus on my people, the numbers come, the customer satisfaction comes, all that comes. So I think addiction gave me going through that years ago, it gave me a uh, it gave me the you know ability to like recognize that to uh, n- not expect perfection from people know that people sometimes just need a chance i mean that's you know in the beginning we talked about like uh before we came on here it was like uh you know part of the intro was we talked like a love for chimney maintenance and at first or chimneys you know and at first it definitely was that And I have since learned that I just love being in business more. I love being a leader more. 
I feel like I am good at it. I'm gifted. I always try to learn more about it. And I love providing opportunity to people. That fills my heart much more than Chimney's ever did. Yeah. And it sounds like year challenges. I mean, you mentioned bad car wreck. I didn't know about that. Homeless, yeah. jobless, legal problems. I knew a little bit about that. You know, you've fallen off a roof. You dealt with addiction. Yep. Uh, if you are willing to be open to the benefits of that, which is so hard for people, right? Like, who wants to be like, man, look at all these these challenges in my life, people want to get away from me, we want to run away from me, yeah. especially as men. We want to avoid it. We want to get it out of our mind or we want to mask it with some kind of coping mechanism, which you chose. Yeah. Certain types of um, work. It yeah, work, was a big uh, one. work yeah. you know, uh, whatever you were, you know, whether it was drinking drugs, whatever you, yeah. you had vices like that to try to mask it or ignore yeah. it. But you realize that those were only delaying the inevitable, you know, and they were actually slowing you down and they weren't doing any good yep. uh, uh, from it, man. Why do you imagine that you became addicted? I'm always curious of that. And I know other it's people never even address it. They just yeah. try to quit it and they never look back on it yeah agreed and uh i th i think i didn't have that clear of a picture on it till for the last couple of years uh, until i've been trying to do more just kind of work on self and uh um you know and this is like the kind of first year i've been coming out more publicly too about my yeah, past and i appreciate it by yeah the way. i know this isn't easy you know i enjoy it though yeah. right like i think i've talked with you enough about it you've shared enough with me i have enough you know leaders in my life who have shared their own and it's just my story right it's my story and and uh and i'm just proud of it so it's your story yeah, yeah. and uh, it's definitely it's just who you are it's what you went through and if anybody i'm always a believer if one person that's listening to this podcast or one person listening to you can be motivated or helped by it and can Agreed. relate to it then we need to be able to share it but also personally like don't you just feel good like yeah. just talking about it like to the point it's just like talking about anything else like That's talking right. about sports talking about your kids at the playground when it just becomes a story well like you said it, it's not talked about enough and uh you know and i've um so you know back to your question like why why did it happen or what maybe mm -hmm. some of the root causes you know i grew up in a, a loving family that's for sure great dad great mom sisters can be a pain in the butt sometimes, but I, I love them dearly. Purpose they, through the pain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to remind myself that daily. Still trying to figure that one out, though. <laughs> no, working I, with challenging people. Yeah, <laughs> There's awesome. a book, I'm sure, about that. <laughs> yeah, awesome sisters. They both work at the chimney company, too. And um, But, you know, without getting too much into, like, family stuff, you know, I think that they're – it's uh one it's a society thing even worse nowadays right the what society is doing to can do to our younger generation that's one uh that i'm tied into the other is some trauma stuff that that happened you know when i was a kid and uh you know it's for me so i went through some stuff when i was about 10 and 11 years old uh that kind of shaped a lot of things and really i found uh, my escape through work then that's why like, you know, drugs and alcohol were one thing, um, mostly drugs. Um, and, but then work was a close second for me too, because yeah. at 12 is when I started working for my family. I'm a fourth generation Mason started working for my family at the age of 12. My uncle says earlier, it was right around 12 and that was my escape. I mean, that was my, my parents also divorced at that age. I was 12. Um, and work was a big one. I mean, I went to work for my uncle and I just remember feeling like so proud. I had money in my pocket so I could buy the things I wanted to buy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of pride. And this was at 12? 12. So I, I was doing. This is interesting. Yep. Summer breaks, uh, after school and on weekends, I worked. My dad also did masonry work too. So I worked with him and. Um, but that became my identity. I became known as like the Italian stallion. <laughs> you know, I could just wheelbarrow, uh, wheelbarrows full of concrete all day. And yeah. Yeah. That I just said it's interesting, not cause the age, but it's funny. The more I, this is new to information to me and I've known you for years and, uh, so work. So you know a lot of the stories and of my, and my, my childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. I've talked about those, po this podcast for those that have listened. And so my grandma, 
I would, I would spend summer months on my grandma's farm. It was my escape. And then we eventually moved to Western Illinois and it was about 12, 13 that I started just working there full time, making five bucks an hour, yep. spending same as same nights, weekends, uh, when I wasn't doing school activities, uh, just working on my grandma's farm about the same age. So it was just fascinating that you and I around the same age yep. for similar reasons found our escape, you know, I'll, I'll couple being working, uh, and it's been, and then just always having a busy mind, staying busy, staying always yeah. having to do something. I was, I always tell people I was never bored when I was a child, and yep. I hear children be bored, and I don't. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. It's just you know I just never wanted to be, and yep. and so it's just interesting that uh, you found that. And I think there's some good in that. I really do believe. Well, these are escapes. I mean, we're, we're children who go have been through some things. We don't know how to handle it in our little small little twelve year old or ten or whatever year no. old minds. I think it's healthy as long as it, you just learn as you grow not to become so obsessed that it becomes where you're like 60 and realize, oh, my God, I worked myself to death and yeah. lost all my relationships. Yeah. But I think, if anything, you know, I imagine starting it early is a good, good escape. I so, think it's, yeah. a, it's a sign of strength, too. I mean, it's a survival mechanism sometimes, too, like. And you, know, you have choices. You, you could do. sit at home, be depressed, and listen to yep. Nirvana all day, or you can listen to Nirvana and go to work. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was big. Like I said, that helped develop my identity, uh, pride, everything. Those were first feelings for me when I started working with my family. And my uncle, my dad, you know, were huge in, sh in uh, creating like the goodwill above all else mindset. My uncle, especially, I spent the most time with him doing the work. Sounds like a good role model. He was awesome. Just the best. Is, is awesome. Uncle Mikey. Well, what, what would you say? I don't know if you have any advice on this, but it's always, you know, there's people that don't have those type of role models. Like I was one where I was searching. Like my uncle does, not to throw him under the bus, but he was the one that was trying to teach me how to drink it. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> he was like the best, I don't want to say the best, but the, he, he felt really great about this advice when he showed me, you want the best tasting beer. <laughs> And he showed me to put the beer, and he, I can't even remember, but it was basically how long to keep it in the back of your truck when it, the first snow hits, and put it in the nice. snow. And this, yeah. <laughs> that was his that was his uh, life tip. Yeah, that gives you an idea, Mike. Now he's a cool dude, and he's fun to hang out with. But if you're looking for like personal development on a more yeah. a cerebral or, but he's the cool guy to hang out with. But uh, again. That was my uncle. And so some people uh, like myself didn't have a lot of those. So what do you, you offer suggestions for people that may not have father figure role yeah. models? We know people without father figures and role models. And if you don't, statistics are high for both incarceration, addiction, uh, homelessness, the, the, the bad lists of statistics yep. for fatherless homes or lack of role models. So sometimes it's just, we need to be those role models or giving advice to searching it out. Yeah. I, that's a good question. I think things were a little different, probably for not the not the result of uh, fatherless stuff, but back when we were younger, you know, you just didn't have social media like you do now. Hmm. It's a blessing and a curse with some things. Social media, great, great for communication, linking up with people, networking. You know, now I feel like <clears throat> now I feel like with TV, social media, YouTube, like that. There's that's a starting point, right? Anything's got to plant the seed first. I think there's a lot out there, positive role models who are putting out content, like even this podcast. Oh, thanks, man. 100%. <laughs> I mean, but, but that's it. Like you said, if it helps one person, right, you've made a difference. And, so you uh, mentioned, see, that's where technology, look for the, if you can't find it in your neighborhood, if you can't yep. find a physical person, look for the good content. Yep. Right? Agreed. Locally, I mean, if I look at like the, in Geneva, you know, years back, so let's say 20 years ago when I was a kid, uh, I look at the guys that were role models that were positive influences, maybe in like the rougher neighborhoods. It was, uh, you know, guys that own gyms, boxing, boxing centers, boys and girls club, you know, coaches at school. I mean, you know, it's, I think you just have to, you have to search for it too, right? And um, coaches is always a good one. It Teachers, is. You know, I was at this meeting yesterday. My daughter's going on the eighth grade DC trip. And it's cool to see these teachers essentially volunteering their time. I mean, yeah, they get paid a salary, but they don't have to go take a weekend. <sighs> yeah. Uh, and just the passion I saw in these educators and excited about, uh, you know, I got to meet the chaperone for my daughter and she's a doctor. And, and it's just cool to see people like that that are just passionate yeah. about what they do. Like you're passionate about what you do. Do. I'm passionate, and and sometimes you need to, to find those people. And if you can't, you know, carve out that time, you might be that person, even if it's just putting content out there. Like yeah, this. yeah. 
Cool, man. So the pandemic, we got to talk about it. You're a business owner. Did it affect you positively or negatively and your business? Uh, and you know, how do you adapt change? Talk about yeah. that a little bit. Let's switch subjects a little bit. Good, yeah. good question. Yeah. Good one. So both there was positive and negative and, uh, at least stuff that seemed negative at first, right? And then it ended up being positive in the end. So it hits, yeah, you know, when you don't know what to do at first, like conspiracy, it's not as big <laughs> as they think. Then it becomes real in Rochester and then panic sets in. All right. You know, I think then I had six to eight people working for me. You know, and I, again, trying to put the people over profit part, I'm like, I, I left, gave people the option. Do you want to stay home? I think I had six people. Do you want to stay home and, you know, collect the, what, whatever check that they were giving out, whatever they were comfortable with. If they didn't want to come into work, I wasn't going to make them. Four people took me up on it, four, four or five, and it was me and one guy left, and Brendan. And we just, uh, we worked together for a good amount of time, just the two of us. You know, it threw some curveballs in, uh, of course, dealing with customers, impact our operation. Oh, sure. Everything had to change, started doing uh, estimates online off of pictures. Um, you know, it oh, made that'd the, be a challenge. Yeah, made things difficult. But so, right, purpose through pain. I'm going to keep alluding to that. You don't have to keep plugging I, my book, but, but I, I like it a lot. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I Thanks, think it's, it's very symbolic of... Uh, Especially when you're in pain, trying to find a purpose. So sure. my, our pain at that time as a contractor, <laughs> you know, and I was newer in business, uh, was COVID hit, not knowing what was going to happen. And I saw an opportunity. So I saw, you know, I'm friends with other business owners. First thing business owners do, hard times hit, typically, not all, but typically is they cut their marketing way down. Hard times are going to hit. Let me cut my marketing. It's always, it's like an insight thing. It's always the first to go marketing. Yeah. Me, I did the exact opposite. I increased our marketing budget by four times when COVID hit because I'm like, you have all these people at home, home from work, scrolling through their phones. I hired a full time content company wow. at that time, yeah. increased our marketing spend all across the board, and we blasted everybody. And, uh, and it just worked. And then, you know, slowly some people didn't come back uh, after I gave them the option of staying home. A couple didn't. That was okay. <clears throat> some started to filter back in, and then we just grew and grew and grew from there. And I think if you positioned yourself right during COVID and you adapted, which a lot of the, a lot of the things we had to adapt to have really helped in the long run. But if business owner, if you positioned yourself right, you adapted, um, I know some like restaurants, it's a different story. So I'll speak in the contractor world kind of only. That's what I know uh, that you could have came out of COVID uh, swinging. Now, two things also happened because it got busy for contractors. And sure did. Um, People my, at home, they had yeah, free money, essentially. Yeah, it, it was. And my, I have a good friend, Randy Sperling, uh, owns On The Spot Cleaners. He's the one that co-owns the Basin Waterproofing Company, also a business coach mentor. And, uh, and so he talks about accidental growth or intentional growth. And so what you saw kind of at the end of COVID was like these businesses that just reacted, right? They just reacted like there was a boom in work, didn't care about their numbers, didn't care about the systems in the business. Just like, give me the work, hire the people, don't train, don't invest, give me the people, do the work, do the work, do the work. Then stuff starts to balance out this past year. And so you're seeing these overstaffed companies, these massive layoffs happening, overstaffed companies, uh, some now going under, just heard of a heating contractor going under. Oh, no. Man. So, you know, but that, <clears throat> and I don't know for certain, but I will say there's a big difference between accidental growth and intentional growth. We went through COVID, I was talking for four wins, I hired business coaches throughout, mentors throughout, and I dove in. I've stayed stayed buried in books and podcasts, always trying to go to trainings, training my people. I mean, I just brought 26 people to Connecticut for the National Chimney yeah, Convention. You know, that was almost, that was three or and four. you got to speak for the They first did. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so our steps were intentional. I mean, before COVID hit, I had my, my three-year plan, my one-year plan, my two-year plan, three, four, five laid out on the whiteboard. And, uh, and that was before COVID hit. So, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, wow. That, I mean, from, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but from the, some of the things that I heard, it reminds you of like the smart people that play the stocks, you know, when everyone's selling, yep. uh, you're buying, you yep. know, it's kind of like when everybody was hiring, you were uh, paying for marketing and doing some different stuff. You were, how did, how did you think like that? Or did you just like, were you watching people? Oh, they're doing this. So I'm going to do this. Or are you just like, they just felt right. Or yeah. how'd you know? I think both. I think I have always been pretty well. Uh, done pretty well at like assessing a risk you know anytime i would invest like in, since falling off the roof since <laughs> yeah yeah good 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 uh good clarifier there 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah man that helped me in more ways that's that... right purpose for pain <laughs> um Still but like with profit with marketing and so this was part of what i talked about in that class i did at the national chimney convention so when I started Four Winds, I would hire people on. As I hired people on, I would hire someone on. You know, they're a laborer, they're a helper, they're doing, they're mixing cement, carrying brick. In my heart, I knew that I didn't want that person, not to say they could never go somewhere else, but I didn't want them to mix mud and carry cement for 10, 15, 20 years. It's okay if you want to. I just saw it on my people and I, that's where you the opportunity. wanted to see growth. I yeah. did. I wanted to provide that. Um, <laughs> wanted to provide that to people. So then I learned, you know, we grew naturally. So I hired people. We were getting a good reputation. I could respond to the growth um, that we were having, you know, but then I'm hiring more people and then I'm seeing that and more. So now I have three or four apprentices and now I have to create three or four more lead spots. So then I would start testing marketing. And in the beginning for me, so that was a lot of my marketing. It was just to, to get more leads coming in, to sell more jobs so I could get more, lead, uh, get more leads or more calls coming in so I could sell more jobs so I can uh, get guys trained up as lead technicians, get them on the road. So everything was driven by that. You know, and I, with marketing, I had to break it down very simple. Like billboards, for example, when we started running billboards, that's a hefty price tag. So I hear. <laughs> it is. I, some stuff you have to track down on a dollar, has to be a return on it. Other stuff, I feel like you, there's a short term return on investment, but there's a long term. And when billboards, we started doing that, just to ease my mind, I had to be like, well, if I only, if I could just sell two or three jobs a month, this certain kind of job from the billboard, yeah. then it'll be that Makes simple. Sense, yeah. I had to like, I had to know that in my heart that like, yeah, you had to justify it. You had yeah. to do the math. You had to think, okay. And you're like, I can do three, yeah. two, three jobs. Okay. <laughs> yep. And then, so that would, that would be how I would assess the risk. Like, am I okay with the worst, am I okay with the worst case that I, if, if, even if it fails or it gets close to failing, I know I could sell two jobs off these billboards. Like I know that. And am, am I okay with that? And I was, I would be okay. And so I would take the risk, you know, you see the results cause we track them now, see the results. And now you know that the system works. So the same thing we started doing TV commercials. Now, you know, TV is a, a huge source for us, a huge source of leads for us. So really, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised just because it seems like with Netflix and Hulu and all those entertainments that we do people, that one too. <laughs> you know, so you get on, cause I was like, I was thinking like, how do people, I know with my kids, for example, like if a 15 second commercial comes on Spotify, when we're in the vehicle, oh, yeah. my seven year old starts freaking out. Like it's the end, but yeah. not quite. I'm being a little dramatic, but she is a seven year old girl and she is a little dramatic. So, yeah. but, so I'm just, that's awesome to hear. And that that's so people that are listening, that are business owners, that are skeptical it's working for you and it people is. are watching and people are hearing and you just got to put yourself out there right it you sounds do like yeah and it goes back to like i was just talking with a couple of business owners this morning one was contemplating doing tv commercials and and i really said it's like a for me in my opinion you know you get your online presence down one it, you're very good at this making content like oh, if you're thanks. not making content <laughs> nowadays like you're behind the times got to make content got to make content you get online down google make content tv i think is the next step one of them there's some little subcategories maybe before that once tv goes on it's like a light switch for the business and that goes back to accidental or intentional growth though you either have to be prepared to handle the increase in leads or you're just gonna respond frantically and now you're gonna get customer complaints on stuff. You're not gonna uh, not gonna be able to deliver results. So 
when we turned TV on, when we turned billboards on, we were ready for the increase. We wanted the increase. We knew we could handle it. We were partly overstaffed in a good way. Um, just so I knew I could take that on. That's awesome, man. Man, so you've mentioned a lot and you know, I wanted this to be for everybody. This has definitely been more for the entrepreneur, business owner, anybody like high earner. What advice would you give someone who's facing like, you know, personal challenges, professional that are especially professional that are struggling uh, to especially stay positive? I'm not asking specifically, let's go work out. You can mention that, but the positive, the joy that, you know, you mentioned, um, and I asked this question, let me, let me go back a little bit. I asked this question because, and correct me if I'm wrong, ever since your roof accident and I saw you at a pretty low point, even though I don't see you every single day of every minute, every time I do see you, even if you're dealing with some kind of challenge, you're figuring out a solution and you're still in a really great mood, full of smiles, your energy good, because I feel energy. Uh, it's a gift that I have to feel the energy of the people around me and your energy is always really good no matter what. I wouldn't even know you're having a bad day <laughs> unless you told me. So I believe you have some some advice that you could give people to try to at least yeah. stay positive because, and then you could give why that's important. Yeah, yeah. And you know, when. Uh, you know, so I've experienced that, especially when I started Four Winds. Like I said, it was a low point. I had just saved up the first $5,000 <laughs> I ever saved in my life. I had no bank loans when I started, nothing like that. No business line of credit. I had $5,000 that I saved up. And I had a pickup truck that my wife had to be the main signer on the loan. Because of her credit, right? Because of her yeah. credit. And I was the co-signer. What a wonderful woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so... That it, let's say then, because the same applies. Like the same applied to me then. There's a, a good book called The Power of Broke, and it's not just financially. It just talks about going through hardships. The power of broke. But I could say then when I started Four Winds, and I could even equate it to current day. But let's say two years ago, because even two years ago, business was in a good point. You know, on the outside, deemed successful. You know, but I could tell you on the inside, things were much different for me. I mean, I, you know, neglected my family because I was overworking, neglected myself, you know, my health, especially, I mean, 240 plus pounds, which is about 50 pounds over where I was always like my point, a uh, good point, um, you know, and then, um, yeah, so I, you know, how to stay positive throughout. I mean, I think sometimes you have to just go through it. You have to experience those feelings. There has to be a turning point of like, I I either know this is temporary or I'm going to use this as a strength. Like, I don't ever want to feel this way again. So for me, let's say two years ago, my family in a rough point, it was around Christmas time. You know, we we're still together. All that family was intact. You know, I was just distant. I wasn't present at home. And I remember my daughter said something to me about uh, that she missed me mm. right around Christmas time, and two years ago, two Christmases ago, and and that was like that was a low point for me. That was a uh, you know because here I am like this business and I'm building for my family. I'm home literally every day, and my daughter still said to me, "I miss you, Daddy," and uh, that hits you right oh. like. That's a gut punch because gut. it's like, <laughs> you're like, I'm doing all this for you, but, and yeah. you just said you're home a lot and she misses you and you realize nothing. I mean, from what I'm sensing is nothing else matters. Nothing. Your bank account could be the highest, yeah. you know, your business could be thriving. You could have a six pack ab, but what your daughter <laughs> said in that moment. Cut it all away. Right. Cut it all away. Nothing else matters. Nothing. And that's that's the big why. I mean, yeah. your, your wife probably felt the same way, but oh, didn't she did. say it. Yeah, maybe oh, she, no, maybe she, she did. did. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. said it. <laughs> she made it clear. She sounds like my wife. Uh, they might say it in a different way than the little little yeah. girl, but man, but continue. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a point. And then like we talked about in the beginning, then a decision came of what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? Am I going to keep this path? Because that... Believe me, there was a point where I'm like, do I keep this path? Do I keep focusing on the business? Because I know, I know the sacrifice has to be has to be made. Or do I, you know, change things up now, right? I have this time where I can change things up. You know, so for me, it was, uh, uh, you know, just focusing on self more. I mean, focusing on self, uh, started working you know, I meet a, a this therapist, life coachy kind of lady, uh, life coach lady, 
every week now, kind of since then, that's been two years. We meet every every Tuesday morning, 6.30, 7.30 on Zoom. And, uh, you know, I think between that, you know, getting back into the gym, and it's hard, it's hard, right? Let's, let's not uh, act confused about it. Like when you're in a low point and you try to incorporate those positive things, back into your life it is so easy to retreat backwards uh so easy to retreat backwards and you know it's i think it's a constant battle of like do i want to continue to feel this way well no i don't well anthony left foot right foot put your pants on and go get it done i mean um you know staying positive staying positive gratitude list uh any it sounds weird but sometimes it's just one thing that you need to turn a day around it doesn't sound weird it sounds like your daughter saying what she said you know you finding health i mean that was one of the questions we're going to ask is like you know how do you prioritize your your self-care and maintain but you tie in all that and i wrote down when you go through it and grow go through it and grow through it like it's simple like that you a lot of people go everyone goes through something but a lot of people yep. don't grow from it. And, yep. and so that's a mantra that I say. It's something I say with my kids. And you said something else that is something I say, and it's a question I ask a lot of my clients, like, how do you want to feel? That's or right. how do you feel? Like, now that we've gotten to some of your healthiest that you've been in years, how do you feel? Yeah. And then I have them write it down and remember that. That's right. And how do you repeat that tomorrow? How yeah. do you keep repeating that day after day after day after day? And that's what keeps you motivated, right? Agreed. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the key to it all. So you need to find what that is, whatever that is to keep your priorities. What else do you do to prioritize self-care and maintain, stay motivated and yeah. maintain life, work, balance? Yeah, so a, a bunch and <laughs> a, a bunch, a bunch of you know little things along the way. And I'd say the big thing that I have learned is, uh, that I've learned now is the ability to be present at home. It took me a long time. So how I do that? Like sometimes I could flip the switch, I drive home, I could listen to music. I think music is a huge spiritual tool, at least for me. I rely on music so much. I mean, I'm probably like top 10 users of Spotify in the world. It's just always playing. No, I, I get it. And I, and, I, and I would just add to redefine music for you. For example, uh, when I write and when I'm challenged with writer's block or yep. whatever you want to call it two things i've done and one is i'll go to the Ma- museum art gallery just need to find my muse essentially yep. and the other thing i've done is i'll throw in like binaural beats you know yep. some alpha waves or ocean waves oh, or something yeah. to just really and and i wrote that so you talked about um it's hard to uh it's easy to retreat backwards uh, it's hard to uh, continue. These things aren't, you, you said it several times, it's not easy. Yep. And that, so what those things do help me find a flow state. And this is what I talk about. You need to find that flow state, for lack of a better term. I like like, like a wave, you know, uh, waves crash, they burn, they break. They, they, you know, if you look at a wave as a life is, is an analogy I like to use because you can see water smooth, you can see waters crash. And yep. I'm sure there's a Bruce Lee quote around there somewhere, <laughs> it sounds like. But the point is, you know, they're always flowing, yeah. you know, there's always a flow to water, you know, water I is a good, co- yeah. So I think there is a quote in there by Bruce Lee, cause he used <laughs> water a lot as a correlation. You wanted the body to flow like water, but I also just look at it as like, you know, it doesn't flow. Doesn't mean easy flow just means no matter what, and whether a boat's coming your way, you can still navigate. That's right. And that's why you got to go to some of those tools. You mentioned some, is there any other tools that yeah. you want to share? Yeah. Music's a big one. You know, my big thing was like being present at home. That was one thing. Uh, making time, uh, time blocking is a big one that, that I do now. Schedule too. it all. We Schedule talked about that. Yep. Even play dates. Yep. Yep. Mm. Uh, intentional time at home and just being present. Sometimes for me, I, I'm a very visual person. So let's say I'm wearing a four winch chimney hat on my ride home to work. Sometimes I have to take that hat off. And I have to put on like a Yeti hat or, you know what I mean? I have to make that connection of work and home I and like separate that. the two. That's cool. Yeah. I, that's just how I, uh, sometimes it's that's, one of them. That's right? a new one. I Maybe change your whole outfit. So if you're like a suit and tie yeah. guy, get in some, whatever you're going to, like get in baseball gear or soccer gear, or yep. lacrosse gear, or hockey gear, or something. Like if you're going to go play with your kids, get your mindset right. Man, that's a really yeah. cool tip. I, I'm going to have to borrow that one. I made these yeah. incantations too, which are extremely helpful for me. So when I, kind of like a self-affirmation thing, 
um, they just, they helped me out a lot, especially like when I spoke at that convention, very nervous. So I've made one for business, personal and self or business, family and self. And got it. I'm working. I'm pulling them. Yeah. And while he's talking about this, like these are just key things about changing your mindset. Like one thing I'll share is that as you know, I, before I go in my house, I always, (laughs) and I still to this day, even though I told my wife, get a text, why are you still in your truck? So, because I'll sit in my truck, however long it takes. Uh, I try to do it on the way home, but it's just much easier once the vehicle stopped and I'm not being stimulated by anything. I can close my eyes, obviously. I can't close them while I drive. I don't have a Tesla. So, yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't do that anyway. But I close my eyes and it changes, but I always have at least one go-to uh, mantra, prayer call, yeah. which is, and I, I, before I go in the house, I always prepare my mind to be ready. Uh, when I haven't done it, it's not as good. It doesn't mean yeah. it's bad. It doesn't mean I lose my temper or something. It just is, it's always better when I stop, calm my mind. And one of my go-tos is uh, I'll breathe in. I'll say, I am a child of God. And I'll exhale. I have everything I need. And I realize I do have everything I need. That's right. And my life is really good. That's right. No matter what just happened, even if I got in an argument, a fight or an accident, yep. whatever, my life is really good. And yeah. and for those that say, well, what if my life isn't? Look around for the grateful things. Do you have a vehicle? Okay, yeah. you don't. Do you have somewhere where you can eat food? I mean, shoes on your hour? feet, right? There's, there, I know that sounds cheesy and you probably hear this a lot, but there's always something... You know, yeah. he's talked about his low moments. I could, I've wrote two books and now a second yeah. one coming out about the low moments in my life. And, and we've all got them. It's not like mine or his story is worse. And some of you all that are listening might even be, may have gone through a lot more and not have had the opportunities and the opportunities start in that mind. Yep. You have to believe they're possible and then they'll come. And so. again, no matter where it is, it's still a choice. Like you can, it's in your, your head, it might be like, I don't want to say I'm grateful for something so stupid. And I get that because I have said that to myself before. But when you don't have it, and yeah. then you have it again. <laughs> oh, that's what addiction gave me. It was like I know what it's like not having it. So I, I mean, I think about that every day. I found the three. Okay, go ahead. So first one is personal. That's the personal one. I am worthy of this life I have created. So it'd be like I, Anthony Valerio. I am worthy of this life I have created. It is a testament testament to my courage and resilience. I will stay in the present moment to cherish it. That's the personal one. My business one, you know, because I would struggle with insecurity. A lot of it's that that some trauma stuff. It's the addiction stuff that I went through, feeling less than, feeling like imposter syndrome. Uh, you know, despite how successful the business is, you know, just not feeling equal to. So it took me a lot of work to get to a point where I am now. So it's I, Anthony Valerio, Valerio see, feel, hear, and know that I am a killer owner. Killer owner of multiple businesses where I foster environments that are genuine, fun, and empowering for myself and others. And then the family one is I, Anthony Valerio, see, feel, hear, and know that I am a loving warrior, compassionate husband, and playful papa who creates magical magical moments from my open and generous heart for myself and my family. Those man, are my things, man. You got that gave me goosebumps, man. Yeah. Just to hear other people and to hear what you and just to know you personally and 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 it's a daily chore. That's yeah. the other people that's the other thing I I don't know if I've read in any books. It's just one thing I come to realize my own. Especially I really like when you don't have it. For example, when I got COVID, which I've talked about in here, so I won't go be long winded, but for those that didn't hear it or don't remember, is I never really dealt with long bouts of mental health issues. And it was one that I couldn't get out of it, but I had no reason. Everything in my life was going well. It's just uh, two weeks after being diagnosed with COVID, I never had the physical, the cough, the lungs, the breathing, the t- like all the things. What I didn't have, I, like I would wake up and for no reason want to like kill myself or feel mm. depressed or or not always suicidal, just like and then I'd have to, so I had to go through all my tools, yeah. my gratitude journal, write about the things I'm grateful, fake a smile, and I felt better. Yeah. And then I could find joy throughout the day. And 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 I write about this a lot more extensively in my second book because this happened during, you know, during that phase. And and so it's like when you don't realize what you have, like if you lose your taste, then you get it back again. Yeah, uh, I saw a video the other day of a woman who uh, lo- she loved coffee and because of COVID again, she lost couldn't her smell or lost for like two years and she just smelt it and she got 
tears nice. when you don't have it That's right. and then you have it. So you want to look around at what you have because yeah. when it's taken away, but also you want to realize that what really matters, yeah. you know, does that. Yeah. You like your BMW, your truck. I mean, I love my truck and I would be yeah. sad if it got taken away. But at the end of the day, nothing like in that moment, right. your daughter. That's right. I miss you, daddy. That's right. Yeah. So anyways, as we wrap it up here, man, is there anything you wanted to share as far as success stories or any upcoming projects with your businesses? Yeah. I will say to kind of wrap it up and hit on the point too of like this. So the business, like I said, has been successful. The businesses are, I have never felt, and someone said this to me, a, a mentor of mine, that success is measured at home first. And I never totally understood that till mm. this last year and a half and two years. And I will say that since I've made home the priority, my family being present, just for even for my own self too, that I have never felt more successful. You know, I could build whatever business and generate X amount of dollars until I addressed, you know, my home stuff, uh, my my family. I've never felt more successful. So, and you would say that's cyclical, or yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like a cycle. So yeah. yeah, they feed off each other. When your home life is better, your work life. When your work life and they just start to feed. Yeah. So you, and that's, and that's what I would call balance. Like sometimes you got to go over here, for example, like when I was heavy writing, yeah. sometimes I couldn't play as much or every day, like I used to, but I would make up for it on a Friday or a Saturday. That's right. Yeah. So I love it. Yeah. That sounds like a good tip. So you've get, provided some valuable information at, any other things that you're like, man, I wish I would have said this for, to help people just strive every day. Yeah. I, I think, uh, just real quick. It's, uh, it's find your why, find your purpose if you're going through it. I mean, you just got to find your why. There's got to be one thing that you could latch on to. And I'm all about finding your why. Biggest thing is once you find your why, you also have to be aware enough that you might have to redefine your why down the road. But root, root cause, find your why. Find your why and push forward. So Find your why, be flexible, adjust, That's right. navigate, be malleable. Yep. Uh, I like to say bamboo almost like that's my business logo now because – both in mind, body, and spirit, you need to be flexible in these areas. Man, this has been amazing. Thanks you for know, having me. Yeah, no, thank you. This has turned out to be really awesome. This has definitely been valuable. For those that are listening that found any value, you're lying to yourself if you didn't. But in all seriousness, <laughs> man, like share, like it, comment. It's not for me. Uh, we're not getting paid for this. This is a, me just coming out Wait here a on second. my time. We're not. <laughs> you're gonna get paid by free advertising no, no, baby no, no, but we're no, not no. getting paid and we just do this uh for this is my why is to help this world before i leave it That's and this right. is one of the many ways that i love to do it if this served anybody which i know it did like share subscribe send it to somebody send it to business owners uh whether they need chimney or plumbing done or whether they just need some life tips especially if they're struggling uh, on that personal side or professional side so thank you for tuning in for another episode of strive 365 Take care. Awesome. Thanks, Justin.